It's week 14 of the fantasy football season, and it is the final week to sew up that playoff berth, or maybe sew up that playoff buy. If you've been listening to all the advice from Michael Fabiano at Sports Illustrated Fabs, let's get to going with this start sit. Who are we starting in this final week before the playoffs at the quarterback position? Let's stick with Tua Tungvaloa. We had him as a start last week. He had 19 points and he didn't play the entire game against the Commanders. I like him this week on Monday night. There's two games on Monday night. One of them is Dolphins Titans uh, over the last four weeks. The Titans have allowed an average of 19.3 points per game to quarterback. So Tua should be in a good spot. And how about Jordan Love? Three straight games over 20 fantasy points. He gets the Giants this week in New Jersey uh, since week 10. Quarterbacks have averaged 18.9 points against Big Blue. So start Jordan Love. Start Jordan Love, who has also been a waiver wire target. So uh, awesome for you guys that have him. But as far as who you're sitting, you're sitting two quarterbacks that did well last week, won, won their games, but you said, eh, don't trust him this week. And people probably think, wait a minute, CJ Stroud is a sit like Fabs. Are you crazy? Uh, well, <laughs> that's debatable. But two of his last three games have not been great. He's been held under 17 points. And the Jets' defense is really good at home. Only one quarterback has scored more than 13.1 points against them in New Jersey, and that was Jalen Hurts. They have held Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Tua, all really good quarterbacks, to fewer than 14 points at MetLife. So beware C.J. Stroud. And Matt Stafford, uh, okay, so I've gotten him wrong the last two weeks. He had a very good game in last week against the Cleveland Browns. I didn't see it coming. Now he's got to travel across the country to the Baltimore Ravens, who are coming off a bye. Uh, a quarterback this season has failed to score more than 16.2 points against them at home, including Stroud, Jared Goff, Joe Burrow. They're really good at home. They're coming off a bye. Matt Stafford, that streak of hot games is going to end in week 14. Let's move over to the running back position. Who are you firing up? I just continue to fire up Isaiah Pacheco. He's so much fun to watch. We've told you to start on the last couple of weeks. Let's stick with it because it's working very well. He's got the Bills this week. Uh, their defense is giving up 4.6 yards per rush. Uh, they've allowed 13 plus fantasy points to running backs nine times. I like Pacheco and I like Zach Moss. And Zach Moss disappointed us last week, I get it. But the snaps were there. He's a featured back, no Jonathan Taylor. The Bengals defense is not good against running backs. So even though Moss was not great last week, forget the past, keep the faith. Start Zach Moss. All right, a couple of interesting sits here, and I'm wondering if you're sitting DeAndre Swift because you're a little concerned that we haven't heard the truth about the fact that he might be a bit banged up because he left the game early on Sunday. A lot of people didn't notice that. Well, not only that, I mean, he scored fewer than 10 points in two of his last three games. And Jen, last week, Kenneth Gainwell led the backfield in mm -hmm. snaps play. Right. That was a shock. And now he's got our beloved Dallas Cowboys, who, oh, by the way, held him to fewer than 10 points earlier this season, back in week nine. You may have to play DeAndre Swift, but you can't play him blindly. The numbers have not been good. And then I've got Alexander Madison on this list. And listen, I mean, the Las Vegas Raiders have not been great against running backs overall, but look at Madison's numbers. I mean, he's been held to single digit points in all but one of his last six games, regardless of the opponent. And Las Vegas has actually been tougher against running backs lately, allowing 3.4 yards per rush since week 10. So Alexander Madison maybe isn't as good a play as you think. Couple of juicy matchups to target at wide receivers, and I'm pretty sure there's no point in us sitting here in this video and saying, start Tyreek Hill. But you do say, uh, go ahead and start Jalen. Yeah, and you know, Jalen Waddle has not been great lately. Like oh. you may think this is low hanging fruit, He's failed to score more than 10.2 points in three of his last four games. Like, that's not great from a fantasy perspective in a full-point PPR league. But now he's got the Titans. Uh, they have allowed the third most fantasy points to perimeter receivers since week 10. So Jalen Waddle should bounce back this week. And then let's start Cortland Sutton. This guy, all he does is score touchdowns. Nine games out of 12, he has found the end zone. He's got the Chargers this week. They've allowed 11 touchdown catches and the third most fantasy points to perimeter receivers. Sutton's a nice play. I've loved Cortland Sutton this season. He's someone I bet on and it has paid off for a value play. All right, let's move over to sitting wide receivers. You are sitting 
A veteran that was a stud early in this season, but it seems like he's kind of fallen out of favor as of late for the Panthers. You remember when Adam Thielen was like really good? I mean, he's scoring mm -hmm. 20 points a game. It was unbelievable. And lately, uh, you know, that carriage has turned back into a pumpkin, unfortunately. I mean, he's failed to score more than 10.2 points in four of his last five games. He's got the Saints this week. Uh, they're tough on wide receivers and slot receivers in particular. So Adam Thielen, I mean, everybody in Carolina, maybe besides Chuba Hubbard, uh, is a risky play this week in New Orleans. And then Chris Godwin, he did not catch a pass last week. He didn't catch a pass. It's the first time he hasn't caught a pass since week 15 in 2018. I mean, that's unbelievable. And even though he scored a touchdown as a runner, he still failed to score double digit fantasy points. He's got Atlanta this week. They've allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points to wide receivers since week 10. So Chris Godwin, unfortunately, is a sit -em. Thank you, Godwin, though, for scoring that rushing touchdown because I think you made the difference in one of my leagues. Thanks so much. All right, going over to the tight end position, you're starting, as, as you like to say, one of our beloveds. I just want to say to those of you out there, though, it's it's really Fabiano's beloved. It's just my team. But anyway. Um, if, if, if it's your beloved? team, they should be your my beloveds. Team. Listen, I, I, <laughs> my relationship with the Cowboys has lasted longer than any relationship I've ever had um, well, with a lady. Um, that might be another story. We're not going to get into that. But let's talk about Jake Ferguson, who had a huge game last week. Touchdown, 19.7 points. The last time he played the Philadelphia Eagles, he had 22.1 points. Uh, the Eagles have given up the ninth most points mm -hmm. to tight ends, the fifth highest catch rate. I'm, I'm chasing the points with Jake Ferguson. And I also like Gerald Everett. And Everett's on the waiver wire in some leagues. You can go out and pick him up and start him this week against the Denver Broncos. They've allowed nine plus points to tight ends 10 times this season, including two with more than 20. Uh, they've given up the most points to tight ends. They've given up the fourth highest catch rate to tight ends. So Gerald Everett could help you if you're in a pinch at tight end. I also really like Gerald Everett and you're right. He is available on most waiver wires. Who are you sitting at the position if you have the luxury? People may think I'm crazy here. Uh, I know it's the holiday season. I have not gotten into the eggnog. I don't like Evan Ingram this week, though. And I get it. Monday night, he was phenomenal. Finally scored a touchdown. Hip, hip, hooray. Now he's got the Browns. The Browns have allowed one tight end, Mark Andrews, to score more than 7.8 points against them. In fact, they have held Trey McBride, Pat Fryermuth, and George Kittle to fewer than six points in games played in Cleveland. So Evan Ingram, I know you probably got to play him. Temper expectations. And then David Njoku, we've been riding him for about five weeks. Well, the wheels fell off last week, and it was Harrison Bryant who was the better of the two Browns tight ends. This week, he's got a matchup that is going to be very difficult against the Jaguars. They've allowed three touchdowns and the second lowest catch rate among tight ends. So with Harrison Bryant playing a bigger role with Joe Flacco under center, David Njoku is a risk-reward low-end tight end one. Unfortunately, Jen, you can't tell people to sit Engram and sit Njoku right. because the tight end position is so thin. But temper those expectations. The matchups are not good. It's true. The matchups are not good. Okay, that is our best advice for this weekend, but it's not all of our best advice. We have even more at si.com slash fantasy, where you can find all of Michael Fabiano's start sits for every position. Go check it out, guys. We'll see you here next week when we start to win our first playoff games.